Hi, if you're just tuning in, we're discussing Faji fraud and the Nigerian youth, and we still have our guest with us. Um, remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Wish Africa One Oil um, with the hashtag Wish, or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 0818038463. So we have a comment from or, or some of our audience on WhatsApp. It says IBB made junior soldier acquire material possessions beyond their income and showcased it shamelessly to the seniors without check um, the pressure on ebos when they travel home for christmas to show or display achievements mm -hmm. creates desperation um that's from one of our audience wow. so i was gonna <laughs> wow. because i keep saying these things who are the people that set the standards who creates this pressure mm. is this is this pressure really real mm. or it's the pressure that you know maybe is in my head mm. but then again when i hear the senator mm. Of the federal, uh, sorry, a minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria mm -hmm. calling someone a mushy boy mm -hmm. and says, because you are from mushy, you do not have the moral grounds and standing, mm -hmm. or you don't have the whatever to talk to me mm -hmm. that was raised in Victoria Island. Mm -hmm. You know, that kind of statement is very weighty. Yeah. And it tells me that what you were saying about, you know, when we, when we try to package ourselves, yeah. you know, we want to package ourselves so that we can impress yeah. these people. So maybe the contracts will come, maybe the whatever will come. Because yeah. if I don't look a certain way, I might not get the job. Exactly. But let me hear um, Abale. <laughs> Are you there? Did we lose him? Okay, tell Thelma, you go ahead. Yeah, and, and I think it, it's so sad. Um, I was literally going to make a point. <laughs> I forgot okay, the point. maybe Uti should yeah, ask that question. So, yeah. so um, I just, you know, we're saying about how young people today want to live the fast life. Yeah. They are not competing with each other. They look at people who are 20, 30 years older than them. Yeah. So you see um, a Florence Shaw Lackage, for instance, carrying an MS bag, and you think, I want to carry that bag. And you're thinking, mm. she's 30, 40, 50 years older than you. Yeah. You know, it's taking time to get there. So why can't you wait? And I, I always call this like everybody wants to start off in Lekki. Mm. Yeah. Forgetting that our parents worked their way up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now everybody wants to start from the top. And it's creating this sort of need for instant wealth. Mm. But again, I don't want to keep sort of putting it to the fact that, oh, this is a recent thing. It's not. Yeah. When you talked about Nigerians in the diaspora, fraud has always been a big thing. Very way big. before social media. Yeah. It's always been a way with which we make money. And the, the, view, the, the viewer who sent in that comment is absolutely spot on. Yeah. And this is not anything to, um, it's the tradition, again, it's the culture. You build big houses in the East, you stay in them for a few weeks a year, yeah. and then they're shut for the rest of the year, yeah. you're back wherever you are. Mm. But it is a status symbol. It's mm -hmm. a way to show that I'm doing well, I've arrived. Yeah. And people only want to associate with those people. When yeah. you haven't arrived, nobody cares where you're coming from. <laughs> and I have to add to that, actually, and that's what I was going to say based on the comment of uh, Igbo people. Mm. I'm Igbo myself, mm. and what Igbo men believe is that they are the breadwinners. If you're getting married to a, a typical Ibo man, he pays for the wedding. He pays for this. So there's also that pressure that young women will also put on these men or that their parents will put on these men. You know, so they feel like, oh, I found the woman of my dreams or whatever. I need to make ends meet. I want to marry soon. Mm -hmm. So they go off and work hard. It's going to take them a long time before they make the money they need in order to celebrate their wives how boyishly they like to do it. Mm -hmm. So what do they do? They go towards the faster life. They make the money quicker, uh, they maintain the status quicker, and it's also the pride of men, isn't it? And it's not just men doing it, it's also the pride of women. Mm -hmm. You know, some women will do it just to keep up a gimmick that, oh, my man treats me well, oh, I'm doing great yeah. things. Even with marketing and personal branding, I mean, what I see in PR is insane. Women will make money from the fast life um, and then start this sort of PR agency and be like, yeah, so, you know, my branding, I've done this, I've worked hard, I have these clients, and it's literally paying your way. And those who do the same thing as you, they're all in this certain circle. They all know each other. You know, I have some, you know, some fast life friends and, you know, they always, they, they know each other. Mm. When they walk in some of the, ah, this, is, this one, Nayaou money. Mm. Do you understand? They always know each other. Mm. And those who work hard, 
us two, we know each other, mm. you know? Mm-hmm. Mm. Absolutely. <laughs> I think we have <laughs> our name back. You know, I, um, there's a recent, uh, I just stumbled on a YouTube um, video. Um, Files and I think Token Makima. They're doing a new series oh, yeah, yeah. on um, something I Banana that, something, Island yeah. versus, versus Lecky. Yeah. However comical that sounds, but that is the, the real reality. reality of what is going on right now. Yeah. You know, and I do not even know how we got to where we are. Yeah. You know, and if there is even hope for us, because now we, we well, let us even try to find a solution, mm. you know. But if I say want to find a solution, we switch on the TV, you're watching somebody as a nobody go into a house for 90 days. The person comes out, now has 10 million followers and the person is buying a brand new Mercedes. Yeah. So where do we even draw the line right. with all of these things? I believe if you're back, um, we lost you for a second there. Yeah, thank you. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Um... <laughs> Yes. Yeah. So, so I was saying that where do we even begin to correct? Because we, if we want to dwell on the issue, we might not even make. I mean, we we can't go anywhere. We'll, we'll be here till maybe three years time. But where do we draw the line, and how do we begin to correct? You know, this impression of I must live a fast life. Uh, okay, um, if you can hear me, I think I'll just go straight to a little bit of history, if um, if you have the moment for it. Um, you see, in the early 70s, when Nigeria officially became a member of OPEC, all right, uh, suddenly we have new wealth, because OPEC now ensured that we would, all the oil-producing uh, countries were selling their oil for a competitive rate compared to what was happening before. So suddenly we had new wealth. Okay, and as soon as that new wealth came up, Nigeria had this stash of forms and we have no idea what to do with it. The head of state was probably uh, recorded to have said that uh, we have money, now the problem is how do we spend it? So they set up a commission, all right? The commission was to look at how do we manage the forms. Now that commission came up with the idea that Nigerian civil servants were supposed to, I mean, we're one of the lowest paid in the world at the time, and they said they should increase their salaries 300 fold and backdated payment three years. And what happened was that they went three years backwards, increased the salary 300%, and paid everything in lump sum. <laughs> Amazing, right? So you have cash, you have liquidity all over the system. Suddenly, to now be in civil service became the new middle class. Everybody abandoned their farms and everything. Everybody wanted to go to the center with portfolios and portmanteaus to look for a federal government appointment. Now that created a subtle shift in our social economic uh, mind frames. We call that the shift from wealth to riches. Because what now happened was that what we used to value before as a people was a creation of wealth. Mm -hmm. I mean, people created wealth when they solved problems. I mean, we had our pyramids of granite. We had our cocoa house. We had our jacuzzi steel. We were, we were solving real problems and we were creating wealth. But what now happened was as soon as oil came in, we stopped wealth creation and then we have this pool of farms, artificial political riches. And what now happened is that with very little effort, you just have to know the right people and the money started to come in. And then if you had the right amount of money to buy your way in and out, that was it. So culture was set. So it was at that point that we missed it. All right, so we no longer became a wealth producing country, we became a country that was obsessed with material riches. Mm -hmm. All right, and it, those who had it were those who were celebrated, and everything went south. You want to solve that problem, you have to start to retrace and fix the problem of institutions. I'll give you an example. I mean, while you were speaking earlier today, before you brought us up in the show, you mentioned a certain ballet boy mm. who was suddenly received in the US to go and study ballet. That's fantastic. All right, and again, we all know about the Olaju Monke, the bread seller. Yeah. Okay. We all know about the little, the little girl called success. Uh, if they say then then stubborn, I stubborn pass. Yeah. You know that's and that's the, blue, the, I don't the know if you can recall. And, the blue that one, and then some, uh, very recently, we had this little boy who was asking the mom, uh, "Mommy, calm I just down. want you to calm down." Mm. And all of that, and he got an audience with the governor. You know what all of this is telling us? It's telling us that we run a system built entirely on the notion of magic, hmm. luck, and miracles. Hmm. All right? That if you are lucky to have a certain break, you are able to photobomb somebody's session, wow. you are able to go viral while trying to get corrected, hmm. you're able to do something. You know, it, 
it reduces success wow. to try and error. Meanwhile, wealth creation is precision science. And so what has happened is that people do not really think that, I mean, why should we wait for some magic break for a boy who's learning to play ballet to get, I mean, to break out? Can't we have a system to identify these smart young people and put them on a success track and give them a clear career path that becomes successful? There's some problem to go on. Why do I have to wait to get lucky? Is the reason our religious houses are getting feared because everybody wants that, that dint of luck. Because it seems like in an Nigerian society, you cannot make it if you don't get lucky. Wow. I mean, success is supposed to be science. Mm. You solve a problem, you get rewarded for it, it is value exchange, you create wealth in the process. And unfortunately, our school system is built around the whole idea of magical riches. All right, you get a degree, maybe you get lucky. It's the reason somebody will spray anointing oil over his CV and hope for some special kind of favor mm. to get into the place. Whereas, if you know your art and you're very good at what you're doing, people are going to line up to pay your top dollar for that expertise. But you know, no, we, we don't push that in our schools. If, as far as I'm concerned, school has become part of the big problem. Because you see, the issue is now that we are no longer educating the kids, we're just schooling them. Schooling means indoctrination. To educate the child is to unleash his mind and create in him the capacity to solve real problems and create wealth for the future. How many young people go to school and do critical thinking and problem solving? No, you are taught what to think. And so when they come out of the system, everybody's trying to survive. So you're out of school, you're in a survival mode. You're a graduate, you're in a survival mode. And then when you see somebody who did not even go to school riding a Venza, you begin to vex her. And that is where the problem comes. <laughs> All right, so okay. the whole thing turns upside down. Upside down, okay. Okay. But, um, I, I, I was going to disagree. Same. Just, um, <laughs> A little. Because, uh, and I totally hear you, Abelie, and, and you have raised some very valid points. Yeah. But I also think that opportunity mm. is a problem in Nigeria. You exactly. have lots of talented young people exactly. who have no doors to put their foot through. So it's not, um, it's not about the fact that um, it's, I want the fast life. Even those who are skilled, who have just don't get the opportunity. So we still are very much a land where you need to find the right opportunity. We're not like other parts of the world where if I do have the skill and I work hard, somebody's going to come and pay me. But he in, the, in the large scope of Nigeria, you may never get no, But he mentioned something about setting up a system that I don't have to wait for that opportunity. Let the system itself be the one to find me. That's what yeah. I'm saying. But I wanted to ask um, Thelma, because you work with young people yeah. at the bottom of the pyramid exactly what has been your experience like with the youth do you think that we have totally you know let go of this um, value for money principle mm -hmm. or everybody wants the fast life yeah. absolutely not now nigeria is made up of 90 percent of it being the informal market which is smes mm -hmm. you can't make it uh, that easily going through the corporate ladder because there's just not that much of a market for it there aren't so many foreign companies coming in anymore. Large organizations are exiting from Nigeria. So everybody needs to get creative, register a business and start whatever they need in order to you know, build their success. Now, there are different funding bodies that are available. There's the Bank of Industry. Um, there are different organizations. There's the angel investors. NGOs, exactly, angel investors, um, venture capitalists. You have the uh, TEF, Tony Elumelu Foundation, all of these kinds of people. Now, they are always, there's funding there, but it's only a few that can access this funding. Hmm. Now, working with those at the bottom of the pyramid, they are the most hardworking, most innovative people I have ever seen. Hmm. And then when uh, 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 those you know, who are ahead of us try to go into those areas to discover people, it's usually because there's some sort of campaign coming up. Hmm. So they go there saying, right, help is here. Nice. Um, we're ready to help people. Um, they get the votes they need and nothing happens afterwards. People just don't look at them because of that same principle. If you do not look the part, you have nothing to offer. Mm -hmm. In our society, they're never looking for what they can give. They're always looking for what they can take from the youth. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why you'll see that, you know, permit me to say, a lot of politicians who have young um, men and women around them that lobby on behalf of them, mm -hmm. right? And 
these people never get into power. These young people never get into power. The only time you'll see a young person becoming an honorable um, at the age of 30 or something is if their dad has served as a senator already. Hmm. So the opportunities, like it's Uti said, slim. is very, very slim. Awesome. In comparison to the UK, mm. you know, you literally do, uh, you don't even need to finish your degree, but yes, you finish your degree. You have a VAC scheme. Mm. Uh, you have uh, uh, incubators and they're literally always going out to scout in university at trade fairs, uh, um, you join a society, uh, you get a scholarship, you do your internship. There's just always an easy way to move forward. But here, no. No. Okay, so one minute, um, I believe, because we don't have time. We've <laughs> run out of time. In one minute, what would you say as your closing remark, you know, how we can rise above this fast life? One Very minute. Neat. Are you there? Yes, yeah, I am. Okay. In one minute, please. All right. We have to fix what we call the first line of influence. Okay. Well, you might want to ask me what that is. Um, one. Oh, shoot. We're losing him. Well, let me quickly take some yes. comments. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Who I can hear you. Who is influencing young people? Mm -hmm. That's just a question. Mm -hmm. All right. If a young person has a. I think we're losing him. Okay, so Angela says, every day living in Nigeria, you always feel like you actually need luck. That's from Angela. Yeah. Joseph says, I agree that education, we the education we offer in Nigeria must translate to solving our localized um, problems. So I think what he was trying to say, if I, if I caught it correctly, uh, is your first point yeah. of influence, yeah. you mm -hmm. know, and I think it's very key. I remember going on an outreach where I was talking to a young boy and the boy was saying something to me. He said, see, he was in SS3 and he was scared. He said, why? Because these guys that do the Yahoo Yahoo, they come to harvest them from SS2 mm -hmm. and they train them, they give them laptops and all of that. He says something, he now said something very profound. He said, my mom will tell you when you graduate, you'll be able to buy me a house, you'll be able to buy me a car. The Yahoo Yahoo people will tell them that you don't need to graduate to, to buy all of those things. Mm -hmm. Once you work for me, I'm able to give you this, I buy you cars. And of course, we would not ask questions. We just mm -hmm. see the car and, and we say, wow, and celebrate yeah. them. So we do not ask questions. So yeah. I, I agree with him if that was the line he was going about, the first um, um, point of influence. Yeah, you know, parents, you know, must be very deliberate about, you know, parenting. Do you have any final remarks? I was just going to build on that to mm. say, the people who live the fast lives, the hush puppy, the mom, for all those mm. people, are working overtime to show our youth on social media mm -hmm, yeah. that this is what I have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think to combat that very quickly, the people who are on top of the corporate ladder, the people who have worked hard to get to where they are, to have the things they have, need to start telling their stories just as loudly yes. as the people who are trying to live those fast lives. Mm -hmm. Because we have to start to combat. The young person has to be able to see a balanced narrative to say, look, there are two ways in which you can get that MS bag. Pick mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. And you won't have everybody go down the, the right Absolutely. route. Yeah. But you will have a lot more people see that I have an alternative. It won't be the sugar daddy. It won't be the Yahoo. You know, there will be other alternatives. I don't mm -hmm. think that the people who if are I adults. Get creative yes. so I can give value for money. Exactly. So, yeah. my final comment, please. My final comment is uh, the only way to tackle the fast life is distribution of wealth. Mm. Uh, unlike other countries, there is money in Nigeria. As much as we, we like to deny it, there's a lot of money here. People come here to make money. Mm. However, it's not distributed equally. equally yeah. uh, those who have the money are hoarding the money. Mm. Uh, because once you taste money, uh, everybody's heard of the same, more money, more problems, right? Mm -hmm. Once you taste money, you won't want to release it. It's sweet. It, it, it comes with respect. It comes with power. It comes with so many things. Who wants to let go of that, mm. you know? So I think if money is distributed, so as it comes in, it's going back out, some sort of like, uh, some sort of pyramid kind of effect, you'll see that so many less people would go towards the fast life. Because number one, people in the fast life, as much as we think it's easy, they don't sleep. <laughs> they're watching their back, they're paranoid, you have to clear your phone before you move. You can't just say, I'm going to go out, I'm going to enjoy myself, I'm going to relax. Mm -hmm. If people are around you, you're mm -hmm. tense. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not an easy life, life. to live. Absolutely. If you owe somebody mm. money, they're chasing you. Their lives mm. are being compromised. People are being killed because yeah, they owe yeah, they their die. fellow. Yeah, they die. Or oh, they go to thing. jail. Or they I mean, go to jail. There's so many things. Exactly. Yeah, it's yeah. embarrassing if you're caught. Mm. I mean, that young, beautiful girl, Ade yeah, herself. Ade so, yeah. Imagine being that young and beautiful. Somebody reached out to me from UK, actually, mm. um, wanted to make her brand ambassador. This was a, a company. Uh, 
um, that they've made a bag specifically for the royal family. And they bought into that and they reached out to me saying, this girl is beautiful. We want her to be the face of our brand. The next day, this thing came out. Imagine being in the fast life mm. and that happening. That's mm -hmm. so crazy. Mm -hmm. So I think once that distribution of wealth is there, you'll see the youth will begin to relax and say, actually, let me work step by step. Absolutely. Absolutely. Give them that option. Yeah. I really love that. I think we can wrap up on that. Yeah. Now, please watch a repeat broadcast of this episode tomorrow at 3 p.m. It's been a very, very insightful conversation, if I can say so myself. <laughs> and keep all the conversations going on all our social media platforms at Wish Africa and at Plus TV Africa as we continue to hear what you're saying. Now, in case you missed today's quote, here it is again. Now, that's the reason I'm not the one that's dead because the attraction of the fast life is very powerful. Now, that's from Bill Murray. Now, see you live tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Thank you so much, Thelma. Thank you, Abele. And thank you, Uti, for doing this with me. Thank you. <laughs>